What we're going to do today is we're going to hear from our fantastic friends at Lockheed Martin. They have been training as Agile HR certified practitioners within a year, I think a year ago, and starting to bring this alive in a traditional hardware company who is developing hardware, software products and services in the aerospace and defense industry. So it's going to be very, very exciting to hear how we can bring this live, even in a traditional company, I think with more than 100 years of history. So there's a legacy there, there's a history there, and things have been done in a certain way, and now you're starting to change that. So today, we've got some awesome friends online here, Lisa, Jeff, John, and Summer. And I've been uh, now uh, very keen to hear what you've been bringing alive in your own organization. So why don't we have a short introduction and let's use uh, the question. So introduce yourselves as, as um, who you are, what you do, and also talk about why you are interested in Agile HR. Why, why do you think that's important? So I, I just added you in an alphabetical order, but because I'm unconventional and I my last name when I was growing up started with a V, I was always last. So we'll start with Summer. Summer, you go first. Uh, can you mention who you are and just talk us through why is Agile HR interesting in your opinion? Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are calling from. So I am Summer Terry and I, of course, work at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics and I am the Senior Talent Development and Learning Specialist in the Learning Effectiveness and Technologies team at, uh, at our company. I uh, have been here for about two years or so and got my Agile HR certification last year. It, almost exactly a year ago, I was starting our class, I believe. And so um, I got that. And then I also got Scrum Master and Product Owner certification shortly after that. So really excited to share some experiences with you. And what inspires me most about Agile HR is the ability to put the customer first and bring them along the journey so you can deliver them value and can quickly adjust to the rapidly changing environments that we face today. So, Brilliant. Yeah, customer centricity is everything and it starts there and it ends there. So good. Awesome. John, your turn. Welcome. Thank you, Rena. And like Summer said, good morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. I'm John McDonald. I am a learning effectiveness and technology analyst with Lockheed Martin Aeronautics. Part of my world is helping to push the agile mindset, agile methodologies within HR, also helping, you know, tuition assistance and everybody's favorite topic this time of year, budget. But what inspires me the most about agile HR is really the possibilities that when you collaborate with your customer and across functions and across those silos, the things that can happen that people thought were impossible, but it's just a matter of, you got to talk to people and you end up finding out, whoa, we can do this and we can do it without budget. That's even better. Oh, love it. Awesome. Thanks, John. What about Jeff? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I work on the same team as John and Summer and not too far from Lisa. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think in Agile HR, the, the thing that excites me the most is about the ability to uh, get folks involved early and often. And it really, uh, you know, as, as Summer said, brings people along with you. Um, and then it's another toolbox in a tool set to solve problems. Uh, you know, the, the old saying, if, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, so now, you know, we've got more than just a hammer in our toolbox. So that's for me. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jeff, and welcome. Lisa, not last but not least at all. Of course. No, I don't mind going last at all. Um, helps my brain juices warm up. But I am Lisa Richards, as Jeff alluded. I am adjacent to his team. So I'm not on Jeff's team. I'm in the TNOC or Talent Organizational Capabilities team um, focused on upskilling our technical talent. So I am a technical uh, talent partner. And so that's where my twist is on where, um, what inspires me about Agile the most or Agile HR the most. And I would say, honestly, it's figuring out how to be efficient on what we do and how we do and thinking about our customers in mind and with the, what product we deliver as a minimum viable product, not a 
um, so a product that they can't use. So it's always thinking of the customer in mind and it really um, accentuates my philosophy and beliefs of, and regarding like employee experiences and thinking of like the user experience when developing products. So it really blends a lot of my background experience from an OD and IO perspective. So it's just that it just elevates how we do agile HR just elevates how we do work even more. I love how you're putting that. Uh, so, so yeah, agile HR for me at least is it's a bucket of values, principles, a mindset, tools, and practices. And when you learn to gracefully use those to deliver value, you have structure, you have discipline, you have focus, you have feedback, you can involve people, and you can just get so much more and better done. Do smarter things in a smarter way, which bring bring more value to the organization. So that's why I'm, uh, uh, well, my work is this, and I've thought about this for so long, but uh, being that biased, I'm still saying this is changing lives and it's changing how HR works. So I'm really thinking that this is a brilliant thing. Thank you all and welcome. And let's start diving into the conversation. So I'm just going to show you, here is me. So I always buy one product of the people who are on these meetups. So that's me in my backyard with my F35. This is a, a Lockheed Martin's, uh, one of the main products. Kidding, I'm not, I was just uh, in a fair and able to have a photo taken with that. So that's what Lockheed Martin is, is doing and a lot of other stuff as well in defense. So good for you to know what it looks like. And we will dive in. First of all, I would just give you a quick overview of Agile, what it is. So as I said, mindset, where you're working, practices, values, how do we deliver value? How do we work? Um, it's with this new way of approaching HR, we're ready to get things done in a changing environment where things are changing around us. So we don't have to have everything planned up front. We can start with a plan, but we have a frequent way of planning it again and reacting and adapting to what has changed around us. What's changing around us now in HR, everybody knows it. We're right in the middle of a pandemic. So we can't just trust us to, for example, budget and plan 2022. Uh, and know what will happen. If we do that, it's kind of childish and na naive already. So we're past the annual planning cycles. We have to, uh, we, we bring, bring ability to focus on our effort on, on the things that features that matter us the most. So very much prioritizing what we do. And we build structures for continuous planning and certain cadence, and also including continuous feedback from whatever we are producing, delivering in an incremental way. So the feedback drives our next iteration. This is just um, in the slide, you can see some elements of agile work, um, what we bring in as structures, as a way of working and as methods. And when you start using these gracefully, you can see those. And then there are some more here. When you start using these gracefully, you can start building the agile HR practice. Delivering, for example, I'll give you an example. How do we bring this live? It's, for example, if we want to create a hybrid onboarding practice for a company where we know people are working remotely partly, maybe coming into the offices partly, we might approach that in an agile way. Instead of just delivering the whole thing and planning the whole thing with HR people, we start approaching that challenge and thinking about increments. What could we deliver first? Maybe we need a great first day experience. And we'll just work on the first day experience and just imagine that, reimagine that together with people that we recently hired, together with employees, together with managers. So we're bringing people in to co-create with us. We're bringing the customer and the user in. That's just an example of Agile HR, just to get us started for those who are new to Agile HR. So I'm going to stop sharing all the slides and we're going to get back to just discussing. And... Uh, um, we, we have, so how this works is we've got a couple of themes that we're going to go through with the panelists and we're going to make sure that they all get to say something. So our first theme is starting with Agile HR. And uh, that's something that many people ask me when we, when we train and when we start working with this is where do we start? Tell us where to start. And the answer is there isn't a recipe for this. So it would be lovely to hear some of your experiences with this. So starting with Agile HR, can you tell us a success, a challenge and a recommendation? And let's start with Lisa. Could you go first, please? 
What, sure. what would you talk about when starting with Agile HR? Yeah, so I think the one success and one challenge goes hand in hand, and it's really helping the team, our teammates or my teammates, create this mindset shift from what we've used to do in waterfall, like we plan everything out. It takes what, maybe a month or two to plan things out. And then you have to plan a change management plan for that plan and then execute. It was, it was a mindset shift to move out from that waterfall way of doing things to an agile way of doing things. And, and that was the challenge, but the, also that was the success that I've been able to do with my team. Um, And it was not all of a sudden, it was an overtime. And so here are the recommendations that really helped us create this mindset shift over time is that we took baby steps. Um, I didn't want them to feel overwhelmed. We focused on like the scrum guide and the basics of the scrum guide. John was my agile HR coach. So I had someone outside of my team so I can have a sanity check. Hey, can I bounce ideas off? So I had some, um, someone outside to talk to, but again, it's, I think the method to our madness was that we kept it simple, silly, and that simple was yet hard. And that was the biggest lessons for us to help create this mindset shift. It was, and then also it really boiled down to a trust of our team that we can trust each other to be okay in this world of uncomfortable. So feeling comfortable with the uncomfortable. So that was our mantra going into this because we all never experienced working as a scrum team and we're all trying something new. And if we stumbled in one area or another, we gave each other grace and, but we acknowledged it. So we took it as a lesson learned. So again, I think it's just that moment of trust and taking the baby steps, finding those those increments and using those like after action reviews um, Mm -hmm. to really take that what's the next step do we want to learn so again we're still on our our journey we use what we one more thing as a recommendation before I pass it along to our teammates but scrummy chats I I don't know if I coined this term but it's essentially like a coffee chat but we hyper focus on one topic topic of scrum and we, we were calling them scrummy chats to deep dive on that particular topic and then and or practice a particular topic, play some games about it or, you know, take some lessons learned. So that's helping us continue to learn Scrum um, over this particular year. Love it. I hear that you're leading it in an agile way as well with the agile values of we don't know, let's see what happens, let's do our best and let's trust ourselves to do a good job. We trust people to try, want to really try and make this work. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's go to Jeff. What would you say? Thanks, Lisa. And Jeff, what are your thoughts about you know, a success, uh, maybe uh, of what you've learned and, and also recommendations, success challenge and recommendation. Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, we as a team, we had some successes on some deliverables. It was really neat. We were all excited after having our Agile HR training and we got right to work going, okay, where can we, where can we get started on something? And so we had some, some good successes on some small projects just within our own team, just trying it out, getting a feel for it. Um, uh, you know, some challenges as we started to expand that, you know, folks were seeing what we were doing, we're talking about it, but cautiously, uh, because we didn't like, at least said, we don't want to scare people off with a bunch of jargon. And I think there was some initial, uh, how do I say it's feelings, I guess, towards agile and, and maybe some folks that had some bad experiences with minimum viable, pro- viable products that maybe seemed more like an excuse to deliver something half done. Uh, and, and then the jargon confused a lot of people and we hear mm-hmm. agile tossed around and it means different things to different folks. Right. So, um, uh, as we started talking more, we saw some, some other people throughout the function asking us if they could be agile trained. So to me, that was a success that, that we were doing something correctly and that it was being seen as valuable, uh, to them. And so they wanted to be part of it also. So that was pretty neat. And then in terms of a recommendation, you know, I think uh, it, it really is that start where you 
can, you know, start where you can have that influence or even have that control, understand what it looks like for you, and then realize that it, it you have to be agile in the implementation of this agile mindset. Uh, you're going to get so far and you'll have to go back and, and iterate and you'll, you'll get a little farther and you have to go back. And so keep that in mind, stay the course. And it eventually it, it you know, it starts to pick up steam. I love that. I love that how you, because agile is also moving into action, getting things done. We can talk about agile forever, but how you put that, okay, we got the training and we thought about where can we start making a difference basically. And then you started doing that. And what I also hear is what usually happens is that agile starts spreading. Agile starts spreading when other people get curious and how do, what, what are they doing? How are they working? They got something done in three weeks that usually takes this, you know, company nine months with something that I heard. Right. Right. You know, we want to learn that too. So there is a natural curiosity that you spark with the results that come out. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Let's go to John. What are your um, success, um, also a, a challenge, and your recommendation? All right, so I would say probably the biggest success was right after our uh, Agile HR training, and we had folks in the organization out there beginning to try it. And we did a quick evaluation of, you know, okay, what's going on? How is this working? And the feedback we were hearing from employees in HR was, this is so engaging. I feel more connected with my work. This is exciting me about what's going on. And for me, helping to bring Agile to, into the organization, that was great because that meant it was spreading. Um, and I would say as far as a challenge goes, <clears throat> you know, like you alluded to at the beginning, we're a hundred year old company. By all measures, we've been extremely successful. And there is that momentum of we've done it for a hundred years this way we've been successful. We're going to keep doing it this way. The <laughs> challenge is meeting those people, the resistance of, you know, times have changed. We have to adapt how we work. We've been great so far, but now we need to, we need to make that pivot. Yeah. And, you know, along those lines, the recommendation, and Jeff kind of alluded to it as well. Um, so I'll expand a little bit, then go into another recommendation. You have to meet people where they are. Not everybody's going to be able to jump straight into doing a scrum team like Lisa's team did. Some folks can be, man, I'm really scared about this. Can we maybe start with just doing a retrospective every you know, staff meeting? Cool. Awesome. You're starting. That's what counts. And then the other recommendation I would have that I've tried to do is as when you're bringing Agile to an organization, you yourself have to help create a safe place so folks can come and talk openly about failures, about yeah. things that they perceive as a failure with Agile. And, you know, especially in our culture, I mean, if something fails, quote unquote, I mean, we build aircraft. A failure, people think of that as you know, aircraft going down. Yeah. So for us, that's a huge image to overcome even. But it's that safe space we have to build. Uh, this is so important. I think, first of all, there are a lot, there's a lot of agile out there now. There are almost religious agilists that make everything agile. And we have to remember, agile is just one approach, especially to a situation which is complex and changing. That's where agile works. If we have something where we know exactly what to build, what to do, we've done that before, we know that we can trust the plan, we don't need agility to do that. We can do that by waterfall. But we need to, so, so this is, I think, what you're John saying, that we need to be mindful of our approach and understand what context we are in. Uh, and I love how you say, meet people where they are. So when we have a person who sits in payroll and they do the same every, every month, they've got certain you know, schedules and they need to keep those schedules, there is not a lot of agility needed in the operations work in payroll, but they might need agility when they develop something or develop their um, collaboration towards the customer or the customer interaction. That's where we could use agility. So to understand where it's used and not. The other thing which you said is about the failure, especially in your kind of a company, or I've been working quite a lot with, with um, pharma, with uh, IT and software, where there is kind of, you have to, especially in certain areas such as, you know, safety and, and banks, etc. 
there isn't room for big failure because big failure costs too much. But now when we talk about agile, the failures are this small because we do that incremental work. So you can easily rewind back. And that's why agile coaches are needed because you can say to the team, hey, it was great that we found this out now, that we didn't build this into the solution, that we got the feedback right now so we can rewind and do it another way. So I think what you're saying there, building that safe space to talk about that is super important. Thanks, John. And now, Summer, your recommendation, challenge, and uh, and um, some rec um, success. Awesome. Yeah. So for me, uh, my success story revolves around a very complex and complicated project that actually was cross-functional um, across our HR organization and impacted people at almost every level in HR. And so uh, with that, we did kind of like what John said, where we met people where they are, right? And we had an agile light approach um, to help us um, you know, work with others in what is seen as a relatively effortless way. Uh, we engage leaders months before the previous year um, in this cycle process, annual cycle process, by bringing them along the journey, getting feedback early on with uh, early recommendations and prototypes, and they even helped us in presenting and launching that. Uh, and to get us started, we got eight of the 17 team members that I was leading for this um, in a form of agile certification. So we kind of started that off right. Um, and with that, we had some great results. Um, our executive presentation was done early and had minimal constructive feedback along the development of it. And uh, because of the involvement of the leaders on the journey, and resulting in 100% understanding and alignment to job roles for our individual contributor focus group, as well as mostly at 90% or above for resonating with each pillar among the HR leadership team and early prototypes. And so this showed great alignment across our organizations. Challenge here, um, when working on another project uh, that was developing tools and resources, we used a full scrum team and even though the team members themselves agreed to our ways of working and we continuously reviewed it in retrospectives, others outside of the team saw it as an actual complex burden, especially from our stakeholders that we were getting feedback from along the way. When we invited them to review one of our guides we developed, they were sitting there thinking, why are you pulling us out of our busy schedules into these reviews or constantly asking for our feedback? So a recommendation that I have here is when engaging your customers, ask them how and how often they would like to be engaged and share more about the why we are bringing them along the journey. Don't just fold them into sprint reviews because it's the recommended way of doing Scrum. Brilliant, brilliant. I had, I was working with the big banks as well where they started having the reviews and the demos to some really main stakeholders. And they had the trouble of the stakeholders leaving the demo before they got to the feedback part because they hadn't explained how they work. They were like, what, you're showing us something which isn't ready. I'm not gonna waste my time here. And they were gone. We're like, mm, okay. So we tried to work around uh, how to bring the people a lot on board with how you're working now as well. I think that that was a very, very good recommendation. Happens a lot when we have these bubbles of agile starting to come alive in the organization and the rest of the org goes like, what, what are they doing? How are they working? Why are we seeing kind of half baked things from there? But that's the thing, what you said there. If you bring them on board early and often, you don't have to do the change management later on because they've been on board with you developing that. Brilliant. Let's move to our next theme. What parts of HR, organizational development, or business, do you see agile being a preferred approach and why? So where would we approach things with an agile mindset rather than the planned waterfall way? And, and can you elaborate on where and why would that be? Let's start with John today. So one of this is a question we get a lot is, you know, where do we start and I, which part of the organization? So I feel that anytime you have an HR group that is really reaching out towards the rest of, in our case, the business, our training and development department, our team there, uh, our change management team, 
folks who are really out there who are going to be doing complex work with the rest of the organization. I feel that's one of the best places for it to start. And one of the things we found helpful as well is, you know, maybe HR operations, like you mentioned payroll, for example, that may not be the best place to start. But, you know, eventually you do kind of go around to looking at those things. Why? One of my instructors, when I did my Scrum Master certification, they mentioned you have to find the right project when you're introducing Agile to an organization. And if you look in those areas like training, learning, and development, there's a lot of opportunities there to have an Agile set up project because you don't know kind of what that outcome, you know those complexities are there. And that helps it succeed, especially in iterative approach. That would be, be my thought of where to start. Very good recommendations there, especially what you say about understanding where you have a customer interaction, where that is really important because you need that feedback to drive the change. And I think it's important there. It's interesting with the change management. I'm going to get back to that after we do a round because I, I think that that's something that we could touch upon a bit more. Awesome. Thanks, John. Let's move to Lisa. Hi. Great question. So thinking of where Agile is applicable um, in HR, I would okay. say I, I really love the Kinefin model or the framework when I learned it in your class with Agile HR, because it taps into my IO psych background. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. And so I would say if you're in a part of a team that's thinking of using Agile, you know, take a step back, look at the Kinefin model, ask yourself, you know, what quadrant are you in? Because where I see Agile really um, useful and impactful is perhaps more in the chaotic or complex quadrant Maybe complicated, but it depends because I hate saying this, the answer, it really does depend on what stage is, is your team. So for example, my team, we were a pretty brand new team. When I joined the team last year, they just formed early 2021. So January, 2021. So we're a new team. We're doing something new that's always changing, which is upskill and technical talent. And it's always feel, it has this feeling that you're, you're always behind the curve. You can't, kind of plan out for five years because then, for example, COVID-19 happened. It changed the game. So that's our team. We just experienced this constant change that we were never catching up. And so I think that's where it became complex and, you know, feeling very thankful that our leadership said, hey, let's, you know, deep dive into the scrum world and committed to it. And it really has been a transformative way of how our team is doing work and I can't leave it. It's really addicting. Once you do agile and I think now, Excellent. yeah, go to the next question, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. What, what, I, what I'm hearing you say is what I see a lot of teams doing. They can't even imagine going back to, I mean, the, um, for me who've been doing 12 years of this, I can't even sit down. For, I think I would do an annual plan because I know I'm wasting my time and I don't want to waste my life anymore. So, I mean, people who start working this way, who have been working in a complex environment, know that we need to work with, through an agile way to get anything done at all. Otherwise, we're just planning and planning and planning and replanning because the plan is never up to date, right? Brilliant. Let's move to summer. Thank you, Lisa. All right, yeah, for me, agile is definitely a preferred approach when it comes to software, IT projects, is naturally you can do minimum viable product releases uh, continuously, and it started there. But areas of HR, I see it being preferred um, is strategy, improvement, project management, where you know it is at the heart of that function, such as HR operations or even my team and learning effectiveness and technology. It's very important in getting customer feedback and making adjustments along the way for processes and resources being developed. But because there are many ways to utilize Agile custom to your situation, these basic principles can be used anywhere if you give it a chance. Kind of like one of the panelists mentioned earlier, you know, meet them where they are and, you know, or see what you can do or just even try retrospectives, right? I think is what John was saying, you know, you know, just try something, you know. Awesome. So there are a lot of tools that you can try anywhere, but you, you can also, you are also mentioning the parts where you, you see human interaction happening a lot, changes happening a lot, et cetera. I've been even using 
listen to this, agile for an audit, an HR audit, which is very traditional. I've been using agile for redesigning the travel management process uh, or travel receipts, how people get their money back, which is the most boring project, but we did that with agile. So it was actually working out quite nicely. So you can use that in traditional projects as well. Um, apart from just, for example, culture change, which is very complex and ambiguous or then what you mentioned as in strategy, um, that's actually something which I think will be very big is agile strategy and portfolio management going forward for, for HR teams. Awesome, thank you, Summer. Moving to, I think Jeff still hasn't said. Yeah, so I, you know, I think it's been well covered at this point. I would say we've seen success with it, with our business partners in our centers of expertise, um, with technology rollouts. Uh, with um, big, you know, white paper deliveries. Uh, so it really spans the spectrum of HR. And I think just because HR is dealing with people and, and people sometimes, uh, maybe more often than not, deal irrationally, <laughs> uh, we don't, you know, it, it's really well set up for the agile approach. We don't know where things are going to go a lot of times. Uh, you have an idea. You know you need a piece of technology out there. You know you have a deliverable. What that looks like exactly is all negotiable, and you, you'll get there. And I think it really just it, it applies across the spectrum in HR. Oh, I love that. I've got a story about that people don't behave very rationally because at, at least from our HR perspective, there was a HR team who started developing career management and career support. And they went and they started planning what that looks like until somebody said, hmm, maybe we should kind of test our assumptions. Let's just check out what people think, what career means. And they just started there. They asked uh, the organization, what do you think career means? And they got feedback like eight other things that they've thought about what career means for people in their organization. So if they started just with their thought about career with the HR expertise they had, they would have been not building very good products and services because that wasn't at all what people thought career was. Just a good example of, it's not always them who behave irrationally. It might also be us in HR that believe we know better. So having that um, scientific mindset of trying to validate your guesses and moving from, I believe I know my organization, I know my area of expertise, and I know how to solve this, Move, moving away from that mindset to, I think I have a good solution, but that needs to be validated. I'm at least going to validate that with the main user groups and be open for feedback. And I'm also ready to toss it into the trash if it doesn't work out. So just a very, very different mindset there, I would say. Brilliant, brilliant examples. Thank you for being so very concrete and practical with what you're what you're bringing into this let's move to our third theme how does it feel for people to try out agile you've been trying this yourself um, but given given that you've been doing that for a long time you probably have also helped others and supported others getting on board how does that feel what kind of suggestions would you have to do and what not to do when getting started we've also we've covered some of that already but something that you want to add on top of that maybe could we start with summer now so there are a lot of misperceptions with agile and it can seem radically different than what we are used to um so first off some of the misperceptions is it's the same process for everyone and it's a complex body of work it is not a one size fits all and you should make sure to review each situation carefully to develop a recommended approach or principles to apply. Then make sure to get feedback from your team and stakeholders before implementing and then have continuous feedback with retrospectives on your approach. So people are also often scared um, of the scrum model with how many meetings are involved and the expectations, but you should make it clear. It's all about what the team wants to do and try. It is also tough because people at, you know, at least our company are not fully assigned to a project and have multiple bodies of work that they are juggling with at the same time. And like in my challenge project, I mentioned earlier, People are not used to being a self-organized team and making their own decisions on how to do the work. This makes it really awkward when deciding who does what or how we accomplish the work. And the expectation here should be emphasized for understanding 
you know, perhaps encouragement in this aspect from the product owner. And I really liked what Lisa said is having that mantra of being uncomfortable, you know, or sorry, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Maybe that would have helped the situation a bit more too. Um, and then approaching with early recommendations or prototypes can be quite surprising to people used to a waterfall approach. Like with the success project that I had shared, that was something that was really tough. And then avoiding polishing prototypes and templates is a challenge too as well. So those are a couple of things on how it does it feel to try out Agile from my perspective. I love that. There, there's something that I need to usually really explicitly train to HR people is to be good enough is good enough. So if you polish your PowerPoint or your idea, your prototype too much, you're already invested in that. You love your idea. You can't, re you can't receive that feedback anymore in an objective way. So I, I really do appreciate what you just said there. Awesome. Thank you, Summer. Let's go to Jeff. So I've been on some of those awkward meetings uh, as well. And, <laughs> you know, crickets, right? Because they're craving a project manager. They're, they need someone to tell them what to do next. And so when you say it's up to the development team, they really have no idea, uh, let alone what you're talking about, even though, or, or even more, what to do with that. So a lot of coaching by the people who do know, here's what this looks like. You know, you may have to provide them steps to get started and, and really handhold them through the first few <laughs> uh, iterations that you're doing so that it starts to make sense and they can kind of wrap their minds around what it looks like for them. Um, I loved your point, Rena, about the humbling HR, right? Is it, you know, a lot of times we can come in and say, well, here's how this needs to go. And when you have a, a, a team of folks and you're getting stakeholder input, from the very beginning, your initial mindset might be way off, it might be close, but it's most definitely going to be different. And so you've got to be open to um, not just receiving that, but encouraging um, people to present things that are different. Um, and then, you know, you can start with something op uh, operational at your at your small level. You know, our, our team can, has, a, has a rhythm that's very Agile-like, uh, even just in how we do our business as usual, right? Our day-to-day -day work uses the same kind of principles and mindsets. And so it's a very easy transition when we are going to go join a team or somebody asks us to help lead or coach another team. I love that. I, I think that you touched upon a very important thing there as well. When, again, let's meet people where they are. So we can't expect the team to jump into full scrum and start making independent decisions by themselves. There might be steps in between and we need, might need to hold their hands for a couple of first sprints. Usually that's what agile coaches do. So really helping the team get along and on board and, and start trusting each other and trust, start trusting the process. And once they do, they realize how much quicker they can do decisions because they are the experts there. They don't have to wait for decisions to be escalated to the management black hole where they never come back from. So uh, I just think that's something that we need to encourage there. Awesome. John, your recommendations about how do people feel when you start? Something that you want to add uh, or bring into the conversation? Sure. So start, uh, how people feel, I think two words excited and scary. I had you know, an actual situation. One of our leaders, they wanted to go into an agile format, a way of working. They'd never done it before. They knew it's what they wanted to do and how their projects were, but they were really scared because by moving their team to this way of working, they were one of the first teams to be doing it, but they were also putting their own reputation and political capital on the line with the rest of HR and the business. Um, so with that, you know, helping them along the way is much like an agile coach, but even more so, I think helping leaders or individuals to or teams to understand there is a way out. Here's a small roadmap we can have off to the side to go back to the way we were if things don't work out for whatever reason. And I've get to hear one of our teams needing that roadmap yet. So that's good. Um, and at least on our team too, we deal a lot with technology and we jokingly always go, well, what's the worst that can happen when we try this out? We break it so bad, IT's never gonna let HR touch it again. So far we've been good with that too. 
Brilliant. I love your point about what's the worst that can happen. And there's always a way back to how we worked before. I mean, it's just change of way of working. It's a method or way of how we're communicating, how we're having meetings. We can always go back to planning a year ahead and moving according to that plan. So brilliant. I think Lisa still, please. Sure. So um, I'll have to um, piggyback on John on the how does it feel for people to try out Agile? It is exciting and scary. I think for me, it felt like, you know, a baby foal having their or a baby horse with their wobbly legs trying to stand up and things are just feel weird, but exciting at the same time. And I think that's also what the rest of my teammates felt is that we're ready to start getting the ball rolling. Um, I think the, some of the, I have like two or three suggestions on what to do um, or maybe, yeah, more of what, uh, what to do to get started. So after my scrum master training, um, this is gonna sound crazy, but I'll share it with y'all. I have a whiteboard in our bathroom. We live in a fixer upper, so don't ask why it's in the in the bathroom. But right now we have it's in the in the bathroom, and I wanted to experience how to do Kanban board with my husband, and he didn't wasn't educated or he wasn't trained in in um, Scrum or um, Agile. So I pushed myself to do some a lot of our fixer upper chores in a Kanban way so we can manage our work. And so I was able to practice and experience it myself first before I was experiencing it with my team later on that, um, that year. So I would say practice at home. If you have children, see how it works on the Kanban board. My scrum master uh, who taught me use it on her family. And so that's where I got the idea of using at home. So I mean, you can't fail at home. You just learn, living together and learning together. So You're that's just the testing one. with your kids. How have you met exactly. the words? Yeah. <laughs> Until one day it's like, it's not in the product backlog items, mom or dad, or my husband would say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that, love that yeah. example. Love no, it, yeah. I think that's the best example. That's a brilliant example. Uh, you, I, I mean, I used Kanban boards for homeschooling. We had Kanban boards up for the homeschool, what they needed to finish during the day. And they, I saw those post-it notes move on the wall and I, I knew that, okay, now they're playing their Fortnite. They've done their work. So that was brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing. We're quite tight on time. And we've got one more kind of um, question that we could jump into. Could we try to be succinct? So um, our theme is, um, what's next? So what kind of development, skill building or improvements are, are you going to do next or are needed next to further mature where you are? So let's just go around with that recommendation and thought. So let's start with John. So the next step for us and for me personally is helping teams and leaders build those safe spaces where they can have mini learnings as opposed to failures. Ooh, love that. Yeah, let's not, sometimes agilists talk about, you know, fa fail fast. And that's a bit ridiculous. You can't sell agile to an organization's executives, but we're gonna fail fast. Oh, how are you? You're not gonna do agile, thank you. It's about um, making learnings quick, making learnings in an, come in an early stage and making them small so that we can continuously know that we're going in the right direction. I love what you just brought up. Thank you, John. What about Jeff? Yeah, I, I think learning by experience is the best way. And so we're kind of in a go do it phase now. Um, and you know we've got some knowledge built and it's starting to expand. And so we're probably, I, I could see us, especially the four of us here, uh, helping a lot of others uh, learn for themselves. Um, like you said, little budget, can go a long way when you can help each other out. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Summer, what are your thoughts about what's next? Yeah, for me, it's about people needing to adopt a growth mindset over the current skill set, you know, um, to have the willingness to receive, accept, and implement feedback along the way. Also getting more skills and visual management, such as with use of JIRA or other similar boards that can help you keep track of tasks, what's in the backlog and work and, and also your progress so you can plan effectively. And um, transferable skills, people skills like communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity for the future of work so that you can 
be a more effective team member. Wow, there's a big backlog of, of, of what, no, what's next. But yeah, all important. Brilliant. What about Lisa? What are your thoughts? What's yeah, I think um, what I found most successful is figuring out those micro experiments. I really uh, say the scrum guide has one of the scrum values is how can you experiment? And that really accelerates that growth mindset and the fail forward um, perspective because if your team knows you know, how to create a hypothesis saying, hey, let's try X, Y, and Z out, see if this works. And then you come back after that particular meeting and it works, great, and we'll continue to do it. How do you create those little hypotheses for your experiment so you can learn from, so you're not just you know, going blind into a particular meeting or a situation? So experiments. Brilliant. Experimenting is a full range of kind of a toolkit as well. And there's uh, design thinkers are really good at that. So when you want to dive deeper into that, look into the design thinking toolkits. Um, we also train that in our trainings, but there are much more available. So they are just amazing. For example, I'll give you an example of a test that you can do. You can create a fake door. It's called a fake door test. You offer something on your training and development page, which really isn't there yet, but you sell that and see how many people are going to click on that and are interested. And then you can see, oh, okay, there's a lot of people interested in this. We're gonna, we're gonna put this up as an offering to the organization. So that's a fake door for you. It doesn't exist yet, but you're offering that. Just these kind of, there are a lot of different tests and a lot of different techniques that you can use. I just love, I could go on talking with you forever, but as we are agilist, we start on time and we finish on time. And I'm gonna look at the chat. First of all, I want to, before we go into the questions, I want to acknowledge and appreciate what you have started since a year ago. Um, you came in and practically started learning about Agile HR. And now you're here sharing how you're helping others across not just HR, but in the business as well, start redefining their way of working, start bringing in this mindset. And I think this will impact your business quite a lot because your business if you think about I'm just gonna say that some other companies in defense and and in this industry are totally running this way they're trying to be agile top to bottom in the business and if you can start doing that you're doing strategic work so good well done good for you and I hope that it's also exciting for your careers to start bringing this alive in your organizations so let's see let's start with Anna Katrin's Question to John, what do you recommend uh, to do when you create these safe spaces, John? Can you just elaborate a little bit around that? Sure, so one of the things that we do that has been very successful is every month we have kind of an Agilist uh, community of practice meeting. So it's a group of all of our Agile folks. Luckily, we're a fairly tight-knit HR organization. So folks are a little more comfortable talking about, okay, you know, what did you try? and I always try to frame things if I'm leading the, leading the conversation is, okay, what have you tried? What challenges do you have? Do you have something that you may want the entire team to swarm around here? Um, unfortunately, there is no quick, easy answer to building that, building that safe space. A lot of it just depends on team building and getting the team to bond. Um, you know, I'm lucky that I'm on a team now where I was having difficulties, you know, a few weeks ago with technology and I was able to trust that my, the rest of my team would be able to have my back on it. When you get there, you know, that's great, but it takes some work and intentionality to build those bonds of trust. I love that trust, trust that you described there. The trust that you can, the team has your back and they're helping you out. Um, brilliant, brilliant. And then what you mentioned there is to create those safe spaces. One of the things that you do, all of you four, is being an, an example. You're being an example yourselves. And when you've lived through that and tried that yourself, you can relate to what other people's are, people are going through as well. So I, I really do appreciate that. It would be great to hear what you were saying regarding change management. The only thing I wanted to say about change management is if you work in an agile way, where you bring your users, your stakeholders on board while you're building the solution, you're validating and verifying your assumptions with them, you won't need change management you won't need to push the solution out to the organization you won't need to 
have these conversations, endless conversations with managers and leaders that we have to implement this now and you have to take this in because they've been working with you and it's a great solution. They usually pull it from you. So just saying that agile change management is something that happens along the way, not something that comes after you've developed the, the product. We've got a question for Lisa. What kind of topics do you talk about in your Scrummy chats? Yeah, so it depends. But I would say when we first started out, it's really focused on um, the beginning stages of what's the agile manifestos to help you know create this mindset shift of what's agile and like the buzzword to what's truly agile of the way of doing work. Um, we also do um, a scrum guide. Sometimes we also break it down to the scrum values. I'll take apart the scrum guide and do micro like scrummy chats. And these scrummy chats are only 30 minutes long. So it doesn't feel too cumbersome on someone's calendar. And sometimes we play games. So we use mural in, um, or like an online collaborative type of board. Um, there are, uh, if you Google out there, there are some scrum games that might be applicable to y'all. Like for example, the Meadows exercise, but feel free to ping me. Um, I could, all of these resources are online and um, I just adopted it into these micro learning sessions that I call scrummy chats. I love that. I think that's one of the most important things to keep that alive is to continue having these self-organized learning experiences mm -hmm. as well and sharing experiences, which is what we do here in the community. Thank you. A massive thank you for all of our, our panelists. Let's give them a hand and a thank you in the chat. Thanks for spending time with us and sharing uh, about your learnings. Thank you for staying online with us. Have a fantastic day or evening. And thank you for our panelists. Bye everyone. And thank you for being online.